So you have to wonder, too, you're trying to reach out to all these people who don't vote, who haven't voted, who might have strayed away from the party a little bit. But for the last several years, all you've done is sown distrust in an election system. If I'm somebody who genuinely believes that, why would I go out to vote? Why would I send in my mail-in ballot? Why wouldn't I think, well, this party's going to cheat, that party's going to cheat because my guy said they're going to cheat? What incentive are you giving voters to turn out, frankly? Brilliant. It leads me into this next soundbite. <laughs> Watch this, boys and girls. <laughs> well, some politicians argue that elections in Michigan can be rigged. 77% of Michigan voters disagree. They are confident about the integrity of Michigan's elections. 61% of Mr. Trump's Michigan supporters say they do have confidence in the process, but one out of four, 25% of Mr. Trump's voters do not. However, veteran Michigan pollster Richard Zuba found that when voters are told there are 12 security measures now in place, including video cameras at every drop box for votes, the confidence level across the state skyrockets, including Mr. Trump's troops. All 12 increased the confidence of voters by 75 percent or more. All 12 actions. And I said earlier how the Trump voters were particularly lack confidence. Look at their numbers. They're enormous. Nearly everyone is above, you know, 80, 80 to 85 percent, most in the 90s, increasing confidence. That is good news for two former Michigan governors and other officials who are part of the Democracy Defense Project, hoping to reassure citizens that voting in Michigan is on the up and up. But we're committed to helping make sure in our state people trust our voting and support our local people who are working in all these elections and so we can get the accurate, honorable count. Former Republican Governor John Engler says the intent here is to avoid uh, some of the conspiracy theories that are out there in social media, the protections that would stop one who's not entitled uh, to stop them from voting and to make sure that once the votes are cast, they're counted appropriately and accurately. Meanwhile, on the election integrity front, some Republicans are suing Democratic Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson for advising local clerks that a person who has never resided in Michigan can still vote here if their spouse or parent does live here. The Republican plaintiffs argue that is simply unconstitutional. But the good news is, if the polling data is correct, a whole bunch of Michigan voters believe that state and local officials are doing all they can to run a fair election to prevent any post-election rigged election charges. Kyle, did you believe that the Trump voters once told that there are safeguards are now on board? Yes. Yeah, I, I do, because most Trump people who believe that the election was stolen or rigged don't know why it was rigged or stolen. They don't know specifically what happened. They may have conspiracy theories rolling around in their head, but they don't know exactly why. And so then when confronted with the safeguards that are actually in place that they don't know existed beforehand, they're like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense, because now they're actually thinking about it. They're engaging in it, maybe for the first time, because they just, they just didn't know what the process was and thought that it was open for corruption. I think education is really important here. I always come back to, you know, the, the Giuliani hearing in Michigan. Um, you know, someone testified during that hearing about, like, the votes coming in in batches, and that was susp suspicious. And it's like, no, that's a precinct. Like, that's literally how we count votes, right? So I do think that the more you can do to sort of lay that baseline of just how elections work and how they are um, secured and what efforts are made and what checks and balances exist, I think the more people um, trust the process. I mean, one, 